Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 31st of July and a super short set of updates this week. Obviously last week there was a lot of them, so it should be not taking up much time at all. As always, I do have the chapters down the bottom of the video, but again, there's a really small number this week. I do want to say thank you. Uh, we hit 140,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, so that was awesome. And yes, as always, I did something food related, this time a giant cookie. I did not eat all of it. Uh, my children were very eager to help consume uh, the massive tasty cookie. New videos this week. I gave a preview of the new premium SSD V2. And this is very, very different from the previous V1 in how we utilize it, how we can pick the various aspects of the resource performance capacity that we may want. I did only get one video extra done last week for two reasons. One on Tuesday, I was actually interviewed for a state of mind podcast about mental well-being, so they'll be publishing that fairly soon. But also I went to Seattle for most of the week for the Microsoft Celebrate event. I was one of the Pinnacle Platinum winners. And while I was there, there was an extra little surprise. I received, they created a brand new award this year, the Distinguished Pinnacle winner. And I was the recipient of that award. So that was an amazing, huge honor. And um, so been a bit of a hectic week. And next week, I'll actually be recording from Juneau, Alaska um, for the Ironman there. But I'll still get out the Azure update as always. So on to what were the updates. So cross subscription and cross tenant Image sharing with the Compute Gallery is in preview. So the Azure Compute Gallery is a new name for the old shared image gallery. I can have more than just images in it. I can have things like VM applications, which we're gonna talk about. So now they have this new direct shared gallery feature. And what that means is now, it's very easy for me to go and share with a specific subscription, or maybe even an entire other tenant. They would then have read access to the gallery they don't need an auxiliary token or anything else. It's very transparent for them. They can't make changes, it's read only, but they could then go and consume the images, the resources to go and create VMs or VM scale sets. So help simplify if I do have multiple tenants or, or multiple subscriptions. In addition, VM applications has gone generally available. So when I think about a complete deployment. We have the operating system, and then what really gives us functionality are the applications. But I would prefer to not bake the app into the image because that would mean, well, every time the app needs to get updated, I have to go and mess around with the image. The more apps, the more I'm messing around with the image. And I also end up with a whole bunch of specialized images with certain applications. So the preference is I have a very clean OS and then I layer on the applications at deployment time. Then if the app needs updating, well, I just update the app package. So VM applications enable me to do exactly that. So the whole point is we have in our Azure Compute Gallery, and I'll go and look at a particular gallery, I can now create this idea of a VM application. Now it starts off, there's really two tiers to this. So we have the VM application, which is the definition. So it's the information about what this application is. And then once I have a definition, so I've got a pre-created one, well then we would actually go and add specific versions. So I can go and add a particular version. This is actually a deployable asset. So this would have things like the binaries, I think it's up to a gigabyte in size. It would have an install script, an uninstall script. I have versions of this, but one of the great things is when I use this, I can actually say, well, just deploy the latest version. I don't actually want to worry about what is or isn't that latest one. I don't want to go and check that, just deploy the latest. So that VM applications is now generally available. So I can go and leverage that. And things like, hey, when I'm deploying a VM, if you go look at the advanced tab, you'll actually see I can add VM applications to it. I can deploy it with a portal, through the CLI, through PowerShell, through an ARM template. All those things are available to me. 
Trusted launched for the DCV3 series. So the DC is the confidential compute built on the Intel SGX technology. So you have those secure enclaves that I can write my application to use. And what the Trusted Launch gives me in addition to that is using the virtual TPM of the Gen 2 VM, using things like Secure Boot, I get an attested secure handoff from the virtual UEFI all the way through to the actual operating system. So again, there's an attestation behind it, but I am assured of the integrity of that complete startup process. So now, hey, even when I'm using these confidential compute SKUs, I still have that trusted launch. And then miscellaneous, just be aware there are new KMS services in Azure. So when I deploy a Windows VM in Azure, it still has to activate, but that's part of the Azure service. There's a built-in KMS. It's changing. So we have this new azkms.core.windows.net, which will replace the old kms.core.windows.net. It does have new IP addresses. You do not generally need to care about this at all. It's just gonna be transparent. The only reason you would care is if maybe you took some specific manual steps. Maybe you had a very locked down environment. Maybe I had to only allow certain DNS lookups, maybe only certain IP addresses for the old KMS, in which case you need to take steps to go and allow the new name and the two new IP addresses that are associated with that new KMS service. Um, but that was it. I told you it was super short. I hope that was useful. And until the next video, take care.